You know, for a long time, I used to think these were just called arc boxes, but they're actually arcs. Arcs. Uh, this is, of course, an arcs wide cabinet mm. from L Acoustics. We got it on its side. Which you're not meant to do. Well, you can. Mm. There, see, that's the thing about arcs is that this is really... You, you can look at it as a single speaker cabinet in isolation mm -hmm. and uh, and it has various qualities in that regard and we'll talk about those in a little bit but really what this is is it's designed to be part of a bigger system yeah um, it, it's designed to to make up more than the sum of its parts if you follow what I mean yeah um, interestingly we're meant to be able to array these horizontally horizontally and vertically yeah yeah if you think of basically I guess to put it in a nutshell it's a constant curvature array mm. which you can turn sideways and yeah. ground stack yeah, yeah it's, an, it's an interesting concept it's an interesting concept and it's a good concept because it works. Mm, mm. I mean, for your investment, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can cover all sorts of funny spaces, whether they're you know, long, deep, wide. Yeah, mm. and look, I think that it's probably worth, you know, on that note, mm. the, the coverage thing, which is that the nominal coverage on this when it's standing up mm. is 90 degrees vertical mm. and 30 degrees horizontal. We've, mm. of course, got it lying down. Mm. So in this mode, it's 90 wide mm. and 30 high. Now, mm. there is also an arcs focus. Mm. Which it looks identical except that it's a bit bigger at the back and that's 15 degrees. Mm. So you've got a combination of uh, pretty narrow and really narrow. Mm. Uh, and the idea is that you can array those vertically uh, so you can have your narrows to go a bit further down the venue and you have your wide to sort of you yeah. know, cover a bit more area, spread the same amount of sound mm. over more okay. area and get a logical reduction. All right. So when you are arraying, what's the rigging like? The rigging's dead simple. There's these little pins at the side. You pull those out. This comes off. You stack your box on, and you uh, basically just slide this guy down there and stick the locking pin. And you do that on each end. Yep. And um, that's it. That's it. One it, way to do it. There is... there is only one way to do it because mm -hmm. it is a constant curvature system. Mm -hmm. um, and the the other nice thing is that uh, when you do start arraying them, uh, there's two amplifier presets. There's one for for called fill mode, which is what I ran, mm -hmm. uh, and there's another one which is not fill mode, which I think is the previous number in the amp, mm -hmm. uh, and that takes into account. That, that you've got multiple cabinets and, and it, it makes them perform a little bit differently. Okay, now you took this guy out and used it in anger on a gig. What did you think of the I response? I took him and his friend out because mm -hmm. I've got two of these here. Uh, and I really enjoyed using these speakers. Hmm. I, I used them in a venue uh, with lots of reflective surfaces with an in-house array uh, and I used them as front fill hmm. for, for the, just the first couple of rows and I wound up pretty much using them like this. I actually gave them a little tiny kick up at the back because mm -hmm. the stage is a little bit taller than the, uh, the house. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had nice coverage from right on the, the end, end of the row right through to the middle. Uh, and really, uh, you notice how, how specific, uh, I guess, the, the pattern control is on mm. this when you walk from being in the aisle to sitting in a seat. And it's not there, then you sit down and it's there and you hear it. Mm. Okay, so this is going to give you very specific and predictable results in terms yep. of coverage. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other thing about it is uh, that, that's predictable is that it, it seems to, I don't know if it was just my application or my room, but I, I, I put these out and you know I EQ'd the house system a bit, then I listened to these and didn't EQ them at all. Well, that's, a, just, that's a good thing. Straight off the bat, it was just right. Okay, game before feedback? Gain for days. Right, okay. And I think that again comes down to the control. Mm. Yeah, I think you'd be right. Um, and look, I mean, it's important to note that, that what I was doing with them is not exactly a recommended application, but it still worked. Mm. So I think if you actually follow the application guides, mm -hmm. the results are only going to get even better. Okay. Now, I guess the only downside here is that the only thing that you can run an L-acoustic speaker off is an L-acoustic amplifier. Mm. And this seems to be a really popular choice, especially amongst the European manufacturers. Yeah. You know, they're making end-to-end -end systems. So the downside to this is that you're buying what are fundamentally quite expensive amps. Yes. They're very brainy amps, mm -hmm. but you do pay a premium. Yeah. The upside to this is that your Arcs wide cabinet running off your LA4 amplifier is always going to sound exactly like an Arcs wide cabinet running off an LA4 amplifier. I think this, why so, is, this is why so many manufacturers have gone down this road. You get a consistent and a high quality result. They've tuned their DSP, they've, you know, they've got their amplifiers working with the right damping factor, and you just, it's always right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, I, I don't know. I mean, I know there's a 12-inch 
woofer and a, a three inch compression driver inside here. But beyond that, I, I don't really know what's going on inside this mm -hmm. or inside the LA4 amplifier. I suspect there's lots of L acoustics going on inside yeah, both of them. Is. But you know, I don't care what's inside mm. if it works and yeah. it works. It really works.